first kick off by saying really this meeting today is to cement old relations and very strong relations between South Africa and Namibia? Yes, that is correct. Um, two issues come to mind. The first is you have to remember that Namibia is quite economically dependent on South Africa, meaning good relations uh, will be beneficial to both countries. And secondly, uh, Namibia allied with South Africa in the economic partnership agreements against the EU by refusing to sign the agreement as did South Africa. So are we seeing a united front here against the EPA? particularly? Definitely in the SACU it's uh, South Africa and Namibia on the one hand and in the SADC EPAC configuration you also have Angola into the uh, grouping. Mm. Okay, let's particularly look at Namibia, which has initialed the, the, the interim EPA. But uh, please unpack for us, what are the major concerns uh, and what are the legal uncertainties in this agreement? Okay, Namibia initialed the agreement specifically with a statement that uh, pointed to specific unresolved issues in the agreement that they wanted to re be resolved before signing the final agreement. Those were addressed in March this year and to most of it they sort of agreed, if you can put that into inverted commas, but there are still two issues outstanding the uh, most favorite nation clause and the definition of the parties. Now, apart from that, there are still 19 other articles that are also unresolved. Just to name a few, Article 4, it's about regional integration. Article 23, the standstill clause. Article 33, agricultural safeguard measures, which is uh, pertinent, uh, important to Namibia. What does this mean, though, for trade with the EU? Are we likely to see some flexibility coming forth from the European commissioners saying they can overlook this process in the meantime? Um, we had promises from the European Commission that they will be flexible. What we've seen in practice is a little bit a different story because despite the agreed, so-called so agreed text of Swagermund, the EC refuses to put that into the uh, text of the agreement, meaning giving it a legal uncertainty. Now, how can you sign an agreement if you are not legally certain what, where it will lead to? Mm. Okay, when we went to Swaziland, uh, if uh, I remember correctly, two months ago, uh, many believed that the e economic partnership agreement with the EU was putting SACO under threat. Is SACO still under threat? Um, let's just go a little bit back. What happened was in um, June, three of the uh, customs union members, namely Botswana, Lesotho and Swaziland, signed the interim agreement, although South Africa and Namibia refused to do that. That brought some strains, uh, trained relationships between the different countries in SACO. Then there was, a, at the beginning of September, there was the EU-South Africa summit in Kleinmont in South Africa, and the EAPAS came up on the agenda again. Then. According to the press release afterwards from the European Commission, they specifically stated that they will look at all the outstanding issues to the benefit of all the countries. These were then taken to the uh, meeting of SACO in Swaziland, it was around about 17, 18 September, and specifically South Africa put on the table either or we're going to preserve SACO as a customs union or you have to decide how to run something different uh, in uh, regional integration in Southern Africa. Then it was decided at that meeting all the members will go for the preservation of the common external tariff, that's one. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they have decided that from now on all SACO members will have a common negotiating position towards third countries. Mm. Now, it's still early days. 
And although they've decided on that, we haven't yet seen anything in practice. Mm. But I just think uh, if you take into account Saku will be 100 years next year, it's the oldest functional customs union in the mm. world. Um, maybe one should give them a chance. And I think maybe the other countries now um, consider that the benefits that are or can be reaped from the customs union are more than just to each going its own way. Now, Wally, the EU has released a statement saying they are willing to engage in constructive and open discussions on all these outstanding issues. Is this not a sign that we might see a resolution soon? Um, soon is maybe too short. I would rather say it's at least a light at the end of the tunnel. Um, just to give you an indication, there was a meeting scheduled or next round of negotiations scheduled in October last month between the SADC EPA configuration and the EC, which was then postponed indefinitely um, to give the SADC EPA configuration more time. Um, there will only be a senior officials meeting somewhere during the course of this month uh, to be determined the date and the time and the place. So I think from next year onwards, we will see some commitment from the EC to accommodate our concerns. Mm -hmm. To say it will be soon, I doubt that, because the, if you look at the list of outstanding issues, uh, it's quite an extensive list. Yeah. But at least if they engage in constructive uh, negotiation with that, we might see some uh, resolutions coming uh, during the course of the first half of next year.